What if I told you that the story of the Armenian people goes back more than 4,000 years and their DNA proves it? Many empires rose and fell, while armies invaded again and again, but the Armenians remained almost the same. This is one of the oldest living peoples on earth. But where did they really come from? Are they truly native to the Armenian highlands? Or did they arrive from somewhere else, carried by ancient migrations? In this video, we are going to uncover the genetic origin of Armenians. We will look at the science and the surprising truths that DNA has revealed. By the end of this video, you will see why the Armenian story is not only about the past, it is about the very meaning of identity itself. The story begins with a big question. Where did the Armenians come from? Some say Armenians were always in the Armenian highlands. Others say they came from the east, ancient Indo-European tribes. There are even myths that connect them to Noah's Ark, resting on Mount Ararat. But who is right? And what does science actually tell us? This debate is not just about history, it is also about identity. Because for Armenians, their homeland and their survival are deeply tied to who they are. To understand the Armenian story, look at a map. Armenia sits at the crossroads of continents. It is between Europe and Asia, between the Middle East and the Caucasus. This location has always been both a blessing and a curse. It gave Armenia contact with many cultures, but it also brought invasion after invasion. Persians, Greeks, Romans, Byzantines, Arabs, Turks, Mongols, Russians. The list goes on. Most people would think that after so many waves of foreign rule, Armenians would be mixed and changed. But the DNA tells a very different story. In recent years, scientists have studied ancient Armenian remains. They have compared them to modern Armenians. And the results shocked even the researchers. The DNA showed continuity. Modern Armenians are almost identical to those who lived thousands of years ago. From the Bronze Age, around 4,000 years ago, to today. This means, despite wars, invasions, genocide and exile, Armenians stayed genetically the same. Their DNA is like a time capsule, carrying the memory of an ancient world. This is the twist that nobody expected, because Armenia's history is full of conquest and migration. Yet, Armenians are one of the least mixed populations in the entire region. Neighbors changed. Borders changed. Empires collapsed. But Armenians remained. To understand this better, scientists compared Armenians with their neighbors. They studied Turks, Persians, Kurds, Georgians, and other nearby groups. And the result was clear. Armenians formed their own cluster different from all the rest. Even though they live close to these groups, they share some history. Armenians are genetically unique. This uniqueness is part of why scientists call them one of the world's oldest surviving peoples. And this is also why debates about their origin can be so emotional. Because the science is not just about the past, it also touches on questions of identity and belonging today. But what about the myths? For centuries, Armenians told stories about their beginnings. One of the most famous is the story of Haik, the legendary founder of Armenia. Haik was said to be a descendant of Noah, and since Noah's Ark is believed by some to have rested on Mount Ararat, many Armenians saw themselves as a people chosen from the start of human history. Science does not prove the Noah story, but it does show that Armenians were already in the region thousands of years ago. The myth and the DNA tell the same message in different ways. Armenians are ancient, and their roots are deep. Another part of the debate is about language. Armenians speak an Indo-European language, so some historians once thought Armenians must have come from outside, bringing this language with them. But DNA shows a different picture. Instead of arriving later, they were already in the highlands when Indo-European languages spread. This suggests that Armenians may have been part of that early movement, or even one of the sources of it. Now, here's a question for you. 
Do you think the Armenian story is proof that identity can survive unchanged for thousands of years? Or do you believe that identity is always a mix and changing, no matter what DNA says? Tell me in the comments. I want to see what you think. Because this is not just about Armenians. It is about all of us. The Armenian DNA story is not just science. It is also a story of survival. Think about it. Persians came. Romans came and Ottomans came. Yet, Armenians are still here. Many times, they faced attempts to erase them. Most tragically, in the early 20th century, during the Armenian Genocide, the DNA shows they survived, not just physically, but with their ancient identity intact. This is rare in history. It shows how culture, language, and identity can survive even when the world changes around them. But it also teaches us something bigger. Identity is not always about power. Sometimes, it is about staying true to your roots. When we look at the Armenian story, we see more than one nation's past. We see a mirror for all humanity. So, where did scientists actually find this ancient DNA? The answer lies in the ground, in the caves, and in the burial sites of Armenia itself. One of the most important places is the Arini, one cave in southern Armenia. This cave is famous for discoveries like the world's oldest known leather shoe and a 6,000-year-old winery. But scientists also recovered ancient human remains from this cave. When they tested the DNA, they found something striking. The people who lived in Arani thousands of years ago were genetically close to modern Armenians today. Another key region is the Shirak Plain in northwestern Armenia. Here, archaeologists uncovered Bronze Age and Iron Age burials. The DNA from these ancient graves showed the same story, strong continuity with present-day Armenians. And then there are sites linked to the ancient kingdom of Urartu. It was a powerful state in the Armenian highlands almost 3,000 years ago. DNA taken from skeletons of this era shows that the people of Urartu were not strangers. They were part of the same genetic line that runs through Armenians today. Together, these sites paint a clear picture. From Arani Cave to the Bronze Age burials of Shirak, from Urartu to modern Yerevan, the DNA stays consistent. This is rare in history. Most places show waves of replacement and mixing. But in Armenia, the ancient people and the modern people are closely connected. It is like looking into a mirror of time. The face may change across generations, but the roots stay the same. Now, it is true that Armenian DNA shows strong continuity for thousands of years, but that does not mean there were no migrations at all. History always leaves some marks. Scientists found that most of the Armenian gene pool comes from the people who lived in the highlands since the Bronze Age, but they also noticed small traces of contact with outsiders. For example, during the Iron Age, when empires like the Assyrians and Persians expanded, there was some gene flow into Armenia. Later, in the medieval period, new groups passed through the region. Arabs, Seljuks, Mongols. Some of their DNA entered the Armenian population, but only in small amounts. What is surprising is not that outsiders came. After all, Armenia sits on a crossroads between east and west. The foreign traces are like tiny ripples on a deep lake. The surface moves, but the foundation remains solid. There were also movements out of Armenia. The biggest was after the genocide in the early 20th century. Millions of Armenians were forced to leave their homeland. They settled in places like Russia, France, United States, Lebanon, and many other countries. When scientists studied the DNA of Armenians in the diaspora, they found something striking. Even after living abroad for a hundred years or more, their DNA still looked almost the same as Armenians in their homeland. This shows how strong community ties and traditions helped preserve their identity, even far from home. So, the story of Armenian DNA is not one of isolation. There were migrations both in and out, but the heart of the people remained in the highlands. 
That is why modern Armenians still carry the same ancient genetic signature, even after centuries of change. The Armenian story is not only about the homeland, it is also about the millions of Armenians who live outside it. This is what we call the Armenian diaspora. The largest wave of the diaspora began in the early 20th century, during the Armenian Genocide. Hundreds of thousands of people were forced to leave their land. Families scattered to the Middle East, to Russia, Europe, and later to the United States. Today, there are strong Armenian communities in places like Los Angeles, Moscow, Beirut, and Paris. What makes this remarkable is how much of their identity they carried with them. They built churches, schools, and cultural centers in foreign lands. They spoke Armenian, taught their children their traditions, and passed down their history. Over generations, some mixing happens when Armenians marry into local populations. But the core DNA remains. This means that even far from Mount Ararat, Armenians continue to carry the same ancient signature of their ancestors. The diaspora shows another side of the story. Resilience. No matter where they go, they find ways to keep their roots alive, in language, in culture, and even in their DNA. Talking about Armenian DNA is not only about science, it is also about politics and identity. Genetic studies confirm what they have always believed, that they are indigenous to the Armenian highlands and have lived there for thousands of years. This brings pride and a sense of justice especially after a history of invasion, shifting borders, and the genocide. But not everyone accepts this. Some neighboring countries, like Turkey or Azerbaijan, tell a different version of history. For them, studies showing deep continuity can feel like a challenge to their national stories. This is why DNA research in the region is often very sensitive. Scientists are careful to say that DNA does not prove land ownership or political rights. It only shows ancestry. But once the findings enter public debate, they are used to support or reject national claims. Most studies compare Armenians with the peoples who live right next to them. Turks, Persians, Georgians, and Kurds. But what happens when we look further, beyond the region? When scientists compared Armenians to populations in Europe and the Middle East, they found something interesting. They share some ancestry with both. This makes sense because the Armenian highlands sit between Europe and Asia at the center of ancient trade routes. For example, Armenians are genetically closer to Southern Europeans, like Greeks and Italians, than to Central Asians. They also share deep roots with Middle Eastern groups, like Assyrians and Jews. It shows that Armenians are part of the wider Indo-European and Near Eastern story not isolated from it. But even with these connections, they still form their own cluster. On genetic maps, they stand apart, showing a unique identity that has lasted for thousands of years. So the big picture is, Armenians are linked to Europe, to the Middle East, and to the Indo-European world. But at the same time, they remain distinct, carrying a signature that is only theirs. In the fourth century, Armenia became the first nation in the world to adopt Christianity as a state religion. The Armenian church became more than just a place of worship. It became a shield of identity. Even when foreign empires ruled the land, Armenians gathered in their churches, spoke their language, and passed on their traditions. Culture played the same role. Armenian writing, created by Mesrop Mashtots in the 5th century, gave the people their own alphabet. This was not just letters on a page, it was a tool of survival. Through their books, songs, and schools, they kept their story alive, even when surrounded by larger and more powerful nations. This is why Armenian DNA shows such strong continuity. It was not only genes that survived, it was also faith, language, and culture. Together, they formed a wall that protected their identity through centuries of war, empire, and exile. So, what is the genetic origin of Armenians? The science says, they are one of the oldest continuous peoples in the world. They have lived in the highlands for thousands of years. 
They carry the DNA of their ancestors almost unchanged. But maybe the real story is not just about being old. It is about resilience. How a people can face empire after empire, tragedy after tragedy, and still remain. That is the secret hidden in the DNA of Armenians. So tell me, what do you think? Are Armenians the most ancient surviving people of their region? Or are they part of a bigger story of migration and change? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this journey into the deep past, don't forget to subscribe for more videos on the hidden history written in our DNA.